Hi, <clears throat> how's it going? I'm just uh, just gonna wait for one more minute and then we'll get started. Uh, this should hopefully, with any luck, be a reasonable uh, build. I haven't I haven't had a time to sort of figure out all the gist around it and sort of make a plan. It was really hard for me to figure out how to make this thing. But uh, now I've got a, a rough idea. I'm going to give it a go and we're going to make a monster. So I will get started in just a minute. And uh, let's just pull up the screen so you can actually see what I'm doing. Get rid of that. Transfer over to here. There we go. Okay, so for those of you who are watching, welcome. Uh, this is probably going to, I'm probably going to go for no more than about an hour, uh, maybe a little bit more than an hour, just because a lot of these uh, monster builds or uh, miniature building <laughs> live streams are kind of on the long side sometimes. So I'm going to try to keep it to an hour and then stop and then we'll come back some other time and finish the, the monster because I probably won't get it done today simply because there's quite a few steps involved, but we, we will get started. Hi, welcome to How to d and My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I'm not going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons so much, but I am happy to talk about Dungeons and Dragons as I am making a really cheap D&D or Dungeons and Dragons miniature, and this monster is called the Roper, which you should be able to see on the screen right now. Now, I have about two different types of Ropers in my collection of miniatures. And out of all of the ropers, I think this one that I'm showing you right now is the best option for any kind of build. What I want to try to do is duplicate this idea, but I want to have more than four tendrils. I want to have six tendrils because my understanding is that the, uh, the rope is supposed to have six tendrils. So that's what we're going to do. Now, all of the materials and the equipment and tools that I use for this build are down in the description if you want to know what I'm using. I am happy to chat as I'm doing this, so by all means throw stuff into the chat because I have the chat window up so I can see it as I work. And I will, I'll talk about the, uh, the build if you like. I'll explain what I'm doing. I'm happy to talk about anything related to Dungeons and Dragons, whether you are a player or a dungeon master, or you just want to just sort of, you know, just chat, you know, small talk, I'm fine with that as well. It'll certainly help the time pass. I'm not going to be playing music in the background. Uh, my, my reason for that is that I figure that if you guys are watching this sort of thing, you don't want to be hearing the um, royalty-free music that I would be able to play. You'd be playing your own music or you'd just be listening to what I'm talking about if I'm talking. So we're going to get started. This is uh, the, the thing we're going to try to duplicate. So I'm going to put that out of the way for now and just run through very briefly the materials that we're going to be using. So you'll need a base. Now this is slightly larger than the base that uh, I would suggest you use, but I didn't have any bases that were exactly large size. This is only slightly larger than large, so I feel like that'll be a good size for our, our roper. I'm going to need a knife, so I have one of those Stanley Classic cutting knives with a heavy blade. We're going to be using uh, cedar mothballs. I used these when I was making the holder. We're going to need this as a structure for putting our, our paper clips into. So there's something solid to actually drill into. So we're going to use those as a, a base as well. So you need some something wooden. It doesn't have to be round. It can be anything, just a block of some kind. Uh, I've got my pliers because we're going to be using a lot of uh, <laughs> we're going to be using a lot of paper clips and unwinding them and twisting wire and so forth. Uh, obviously, you'll need a glue gun, which is heating up right now, which we've got right here. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to try to use as, as little green stuff, but I do have some green stuff if I need it. I'm going to be using mostly um, that Millie putt. That's cheaper, uh, two compound putty. The Millie putt, I feel, is a, a better option. This is the same box that I started off with. I haven't used it up yet. And then, of course, you'll need some glue sticks. So I've got some selection of glue sticks just in case. I'm going to have to glue some stuff down as we go. I'm going to be using a drill. I have to drill some holes, so I'm using the, the Citadel drill uh, simply because I feel like it's a better quality drill for doing the job. And I've got my bit already lined up to go. And we're going to need some sculpting tools. Uh, this is mostly to make sure I don't mind burning myself with the hot glue gun. But yeah, it'll also be necessary when you're using the putty. You'll need some 
toothpicks. So I've got uh, a container of toothpicks, really cheap. I picked this up in New Zealand uh, for two bucks. Um, you can probably get it even cheaper where you are. Um, New Zealand's a bit more expensive than every, everywhere else, usually. Our trusty tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil, we're going to be using that as well. And because I'm the sort of person who is not too sure if I need to stick something down, I've got some blue tags so I can tack things down so they don't go wandering on me should I need it to be fixed in place. And uh, I've tried to position the cutting mat that I've got here that I'm working on in the middle of the screen so you've got a good view so I know where I need to be working is essentially where that uh, that base is lying right now. You'll also need some beads. We're only going to use one bead for the eyeball but you'll need at least uh, something that's round so whether you make it out of putty it's up to you it doesn't matter. And our trusty paper clips. Heavy duty uh, thick wire paper clip for our tendrils that we are going to make very shortly. So I'm going to just grab uh, six of these because I'm going to need six. I don't know how long my tendrils need to be. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with winding them out and leaving them the length, the full length until I decide what is going to be the correct length for the tendril. Uh, that's four, five, six. Okay. All right. So I've got six of those. I shouldn't need any more than that. And I do have extra tin foil because I might need it because I want to build up the base of it first around here with tin foil, which I'm going to scrunch up, and then I'm going to drill holes into one of the cedar balls uh, to feed our uh, wire into, and I'm going to glue that on top of the the base, and that will give us the main structure that I can build around. So I better get started, eh? Okay, so I've got four bits of tin foil that I've torn up and all I'm going to do is to scrunch it up. And I'm trying to keep it within the, the base area. Okay, it, it doesn't have to be perfect because remember we are going to be building around this and we can use tin foil and putty for that. It just needs to be able to accept one of these cedar balls, which if I can get them back out, I taped down the edge, didn't I? Of course I did. Uh, come on. Ugh. All right, let's get the knife in. Actually, can I get that corner? There we go. That was easier. Okay, just find the corner, lift it up. These cedar balls have been super helpful. They're really cheap too, so I'm glad I picked them up when I did. Okay, and that is going to sit on top of, because I wanted to lift up the cedar ball just a little bit so that the tendrils aren't coming from the bottom. It's more like the original miniature. I also need to make sure that I leave space to build the mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the base of it further away from one side so I can uh, position the mouth sort of around here. But I'll build that up later. Okay, so let's start off with just hot gluing the... Uh, aluminium base that I've created down. Oh, keep feeding. Be fast about this. Fast, 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 fast. Squeeze that glue out. Okay. Oh, wait, I can feel it heating up already. That didn't take long. Transfers the heat very, very easily. Okay. So that's gluing into place now. I just need to leave that for a little while, but we can move on to the next step, which is because this is going to be on top, I'm not going to glue it on just yet. What I want to do is be able to hold it and drill my holes. And I feel like that's going to be easier to do if I have um, access to it. So that'll be our main structure. So I'll push that off to the side and uh, grab that drill, Oops, which is here. And what I thought I would do is I would drill my holes in such a way that I get um, evenly spaced and avoid using any sort of holes in the front because that's where the mouth is supposed to be. So I'm going to avoid doing that. So I need to sort of uh, make sure that I don't drill all the way around. So let's just start off with this. Let's get started. 
hopefully you guys can see I'm just uh, I know it's a little bit difficult because of the way I'm positioning this but um, if I can come around this way a bit more um, there we go there we go there we go that's better you can see now so I'm gonna go fairly deep I've got plenty of um, paper clip to work with so I don't need to worry about being stingy about it okay oh. there we go obviously I'm not going to drill all the way through that would be silly I just need to make sure the sawdust comes out and we just need to check to make sure it's going to accept it will the paper clip go through yep it will and hopefully there's enough space for some glue to hold it in place as well which is going to be important okay so i just need to keep working my way around this thing and drilling holes um i think what i'll do is i'll go straight to the other side so that i can space them out So it's kind of weird. I um I never thought I would. I've been for so long. I've been wanting to make monsters, and uh, the rope is certainly one monster that I wanted to make. Uh, the black pudding, the osiog. It's so hard to get an osiog, and the, it's quite a cool monster. So I've always wanted to sort of uh, have a go at that. But I was looking at the rope, and I'm thinking actually, out of all of the monsters that I've seen, that's actually one that I really want to do, and. Um, I was actually quite surprised just how tricky the gelatinous cube was to make. Uh, DM Scotty, well, should I say um, Scotty at um, the DM's Craft did a video on that particular um, build and I sort of duplicated it. And I saw somebody else, I can't remember his name, but he, he made one as well. Um, and it came out really, really well. But um, if somebody had said, Fred, you're going to find yourself making monsters. Uh, I would have said, yeah, that's not likely, but it has, it's happened, um, it's, and, and actually I'm, I'm kind of enjoying myself, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I feel like this is going to be a little bit, I've got to space it in such a way, so how do I do that? Right there, I guess. But uh, yeah, better than me constantly making videos on where to buy cheap miniatures, where of course there are no such thing as cheap Dun official Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. You can buy somebody else's product line, but even I'd say even the cheapest miniature that you could buy nowadays, even if you go for something like Reaper or the Dungeons and Dragons um, board games, which is usually where I sort of refer people to, uh, they're starting to get a bit pricey now. You know, it's about two bucks for an unpainted miniature for me in New Zealand if I wanted to buy the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons board games. Whereas it was a lot cheaper, it was like a, a, a dollar or um, maybe just over a dollar, which wasn't too bad. But it, you know, with the, the the demand's gone up so much, and the price of miniatures has just skyrocketed. So now I find myself in a position where I, f I feel bad, and nobody is making miniatures online. Well, not monster miniatures. I know. Oh, what's his name? Tom, Tom something, I, I keep forgetting his name, if I could if I could just pull that name out of my um, head, he does a lot of humanoids, he has a great channel, yeah. but yeah, yeah, miniatures are a bit more expensive, something like even the, the Reaper Bones, I've looked at them and for me it's about $3 a miniature, so I don't know what it's like for you, where you are in the world, um, but it, it isn't, and these are unpainted, these are not painted miniatures, these are unpainted, so you've got to do some assembly sometimes and you've got to paint them yourself so yeah it's um it's a bit of a drag i have to say still we're going to deal with that because we're going to make our own stuff from now on and um, particularly if you've got time if you don't have time you've got the money then you know go and buy them that's fine okay it's got to be frustrating for people around the world where they're in a location where they can't ship from amazon or anywhere and get these sorts of things. Um, I think that is one of the most 
annoying aspects. I've found that happen to me a couple of times where, and, and I'm, a, I'm affiliated to Amazon, so you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying this because um, I've got a beef with them or anything, because uh, you know, eventually I might get paid. Uh, but the, the, the gist is that, you know, they don't ship to everywhere in the world. They, there are limitations about where they will send stuff, which is kind of awful. But I guess they've got to have limits they can't send to everywhere. I know where I live, I can't ship to here. I have to ship uh, to a work site in the city and then pick it up from there if I want to have anything from Amazon. Um, not that I, even if I did ship it here and I could get it shipped to here, most of it just gets stolen before I can even pick it up, so. Alright. Oh man, that's, uh, that last hole is really hard. <laughs> it's drilling, but either my drill bit is getting getting blunt or I'm getting weaker. Could be, that, could be I'm just getting weaker. <laughs> okay. So... Feel like those holes are reasonably cleaned out. How's it going, Jellyfish Panda? Jellyfish Panda, what a great name! I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> I like your crafting series. I'm glad I can see this one live. Hey, look, I'm glad you managed to make it, um, Jellyfish Panda. And I, I know a lot of people sort of say, Fred, I'm not too sure about the the live stream idea because you know my channel was built on instructional videos on how to play Dungeons and Dragons and all of the videos have usually been really really short and of course live streaming is not short it's it's quite a long process uh, so, so and the draw factor not everybody wants it but um, I still think it's a good idea I, I like the idea of being able to communicate with you guys directly rather than just answering questions in the comments so what I'm doing is I've made a base out of tin foil put on a, on a um, on a plastic base which is a little bit larger than large uh, um, so it's not quite two inches it's maybe slightly bigger and I'm just cutting into this wooden cedar mothball so I can feed six tendrils into it that is that is what is happening right now okay I think that's got it sorted I have to come back if it's not working so now I've got to glue this on and my feeling is if I glue it on before I stick the paper clips in, it's going to be a problem. So I'm going to just leave that there for now. That's what eventually uh, the structure will look like. But let's start unwinding some of these paper clips. I've got six of them, six tendrils. For those of you who, uh, I don't know how much you know about the, the roper, I've used ropers quite a few times. And I feel like that each time I use the roper, I get better at using it. And the uh, the ability to disguise themselves as a stagmite or stalactite means that obviously they're going to probably get surprised, which is awesome. They need to have it because they're very very slow. So if they're not able to uh, capture their prey quickly, it's going to be all over. They've got a really long reach, which kind of surprises uh, the number of players who've um, faced ropers in my games, and I've told them just how far it can reach, and they're like seriously that far and I said yeah yeah that's it's it's got a long reach it can it can get you from where you are you are not safe where you are and yeah so you can make what four for Dungeons and Dragons 5e you can make four uh, tendril attacks that's to grapple them and then you can reel them in for 25 feet it's got a reach of 50 feet which is awesome so you stick this thing on the ceiling of a cabin and um, if you put it over the top or near a, a chasm or a, a cliff face or something like that you can pick up your player characters with your monster and drop them down the, and, and, and squish them you know like falling damage does the uh, does the worst worst part while one of them gets consumed so I can reel it in four tendril attack and um, tendril attacks to grapple reel it in each one can reel in a target and then once you've done that then you get to bite once so I like the idea it's um it's a cool monster it's the sort of thing that uh, will form a, an ally or a, a partnership with other creatures and caverns. It's something you'll find in the Underdark mostly. But yeah, awesome. And they're voracious. They, uh, they, they, just, they eat anything. They'll, they'll eat items. They won't just eat creatures. They'll eat items. So, hence, it is time to make a roper. 
and add to my collection of homemade miniatures. I haven't been buying very many miniatures recently and that's mostly because I don't have a job but um, I'm not entirely sure that I'll necessarily need to, to go and buy them. If I keep making them then why would I go and buy them? Unless it's really awesome and I don't feel like I can do it. Alright, that's uh, three. In terms of uh, its shape and so forth, I'm not so much worried about um, the shape of my tendrils just yet. I just need to get them into the mount, uh, into the, the wooden ball first. Uh, okay, drink of water. Oh, man, it is so humid here. It's, it's a hot day, it's raining, and the humidity in New Zealand is already pretty high, but it's even more humid now. I think I've used I had a, I've used a roper in Horde of the Dragon Queen. I've used a roper in uh, one of my homemade adventures where I wanted to sort of place something in a location where I thought it would be sort of um, really interesting. I think when I did that though, I made the mistake of putting the roper uh, on the ground, and that's that's really like seriously stupid because. Obviously, they, they just can't flee. If they get into trouble, it's really fight to the death or try to make a bargain. Um, at, provided they can actually talk or communicate with the player's characters. Which, you know, <clears throat> will they be able to do that? I don't think so because, gosh, uh, they don't know any languages. So that's unlikely. <laughs> okay. Man, these... these Paper clips that I bought have been so useful. I've still got plenty of them too. Who would have guessed that uh, tin foil mothballs, wooden mothballs, and paper clips could be so useful for making monsters and glue stick? Uh, so that's probably one thing. If if you're not too fussy about how your rope is going to look. You probably wouldn't need to necessarily use uh, the milli putt or the green stuff to coat it. Once you've got basic structure, you probably could just um, coat it with uh, your hot glue gun if you wanted to. I don't know how well it would turn out. I'm not going to be doing that myself, but um, certainly, you know, give it a go. Never know. It might work out. It's certainly, look, glue sticks are cheaper than any kind of uh, two-part putty or... Um, uh, bog, you know, modeling clay, stuff like that. I don't really go for using the in the bake in the oven sort of clay or the dry clay, although I've got some dry clay, I've got a whole bunch of it I could use at some point. Oh, okay. Alright, so that's done. Now I feel like it's the process of uh, feeding these in and gluing them into place. I'm just going to clear my workspace. There's a lot of sawdust here, and um, I feel like it's going to get in the way. So let's just brush it off onto this piece of paper, and then it's probably just going to stick to my sweaty hands. There we go. So I figured out how to fix the the focus on my camera for my webcam, so that it doesn't constantly move in and out while I'm doing my my live streams. Once I've got my, my distance worked out, I've just locked the mechanism. I couldn't find the save function on the Logitech Brio webcam. It's supposed to be a pretty good um, webcam, but I couldn't find it. And then I re realized, after I'd been using it a few times, that it actually auto-saves. There is no necessity. You don't have to worry about saving your anything, because it auto-saves. So, who would have guessed? Found out the hard way. Trial and error. Okay, let's, let's get some glue on here. Now, if the glue doesn't go all the way into the hole, I honestly don't think it's going to matter too much. This hole is actually uh, quite a lot, it's quite a lot um, wider than the actual paper clip, so there's space for the glue. Oh, come on. Little, Little bits. I've got my own tendrils to deal with. Come here. 
earthy. I'm going to be careful I don't burn myself. Although that is the, isn't that the joy of coming and watching me? Is watching me burn myself. Go, ah! <laughs> okay. It never, you know, when you start doing these things, they never look like it's going to be, oh, that does look like it's going to be a monster. That just looks like somebody trying to make, I have never made a roper before. Be warned now. I've never, this is my first time. Um, I, I had a look at what, I think it was AJ Pickett had done, and I was thinking, gosh, it's really complicated, and I feel like there's so many processes to that. I feel like the learning curve is really high, and he's really good at that sort of stuff. But So this is my own way of making a, a roper, and we'll see how it works out. It's got to, got to work for everybody, right? Otherwise, there's no point being able to do it this way. Uh, and look, don't worry about the wires just sort of splaying out like that because you're going to wiggle them around and make them look like they, um, they are tendrils and wrapping around and stuff like that. Do all the bending later. Okay, I feel like that was way too much glue there. I'm just going to scrape that down. Okay, all right, leave that. That's dry. Um, Nobbing ham. Hi, Fred. Who would win in a fight between a purple tentacle and a green tentacle? <laughs> Your gelatinous cube is classic material. Thanks for the video. You're welcome. Don't forget, um, the original video uh, wasn't done by DM um, or Scotty on uh, DM's craft. Although he did a video, he actually, one of, I think one of his patrons or somebody had put it up on his Facebook group. Um, go watch his video at some point because it's, it's pretty awesome. I think he does a better job than I do. I just wanted to see if it would work if I did it myself. I'm glad that somebody else had a go at it as well, and they they actually sent me a link to the video they made showing off what they had done. And um, yeah, it works out pretty well. I think I've got a better way for doing it because I feel like that, you know, that um, overhead projector sheet. It's expensive and it's kind of thin. It's really hard. It's really hard to actually get anything like that, which is of a thick enough. That it's going to be useful to you. So what I was thinking I would do, or I'm going to glue this into place and set. What I'm thinking I would do is I would use um, those clear sort of envelopes. You can buy like clear envelope, and it's made out of see-through material. It's not completely see-through, but it doesn't really matter because once you finish doing the gelatinous cube, right? It, it basically it basically isn't completely see-through anyway when you finish making it. So it doesn't matter. Who cares, right? Okay, it's just... So I figured that, that clear um, envelope that you can get for sticking your papers in is probably a better option for making a gelatinous cube because that material is a lot thicker. It's a lot more, um, a lot easier to work with, I, you know, because I had a lot of tr trouble joining it. It was really, really tricky. Right, I feel like I'm just going to wait for that to sort of set a little bit. I'm going to start tearing up some um, some tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil. So it's going to make a bit of noise. So if I'm not talking, there's a good reason. I'm going to come back to this and, and fill in with a bit of glue as well. So it just stays in place.
Okay, I've got the tin foil all um, all sorted. And Nottingham, I'm I'm partial to green tentacles over purple tentacles. So I'm going to go with the green tentacle being the one that actually uh, succeeds is uh, is going to um, take on that purple tentacle and, and squeeze it to death. Okay, so first thing is I want to sort of build up sort of a pointy bit to represent this thing. Um, with my uh, tin foil, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrunch it up. I'm going to leave the bottom fairly sort of loose because I'm going to I'm sort of jam that on top in a second. But first, let's just uh, put a bead of glue around here. I just don't want this thing to break on me, so I'm going to just feed some glue around the base make sure the base is staying in place. Uh, let's make sure I do it in such a way that you can see. Sorry guys. I should have done this before I put the tentacles on. Seriously Fred, what was I thinking? So when you're doing this, make sure you do this before the tentacles go in place because they get in the way. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give that just a second to dry, and then we'll I'll glue around here and get that um, mothball secured good and strong. So you, can, you get the idea of what we're trying to do is we're trying to build up the main structure with the tin foil so I've got something to put the putty over the top with. And, um, and then of course uh, those toothpicks will eventually will drill holes and feed toothpicks in to create teeth around the mouth and obviously a bead for an eye. It's really simple. I don't think it's going to be very difficult to make. I think it's a pretty simple process. I'm just waiting for that to dry. I'm just going to check to make sure I, because I... I've burnt myself on the hot glue gun a few times, so let's just get rid of that. Uh, down there, and then just check it. It's still a bit tacky, we'll just give it a little bit longer, and then I'll glue the mothball on. Okay. Have you guys, anybody, anybody been watching the paper craft that um, Johnny is doing on basically D&D? He's been making lots of um, paper or card buildings and um, furniture, things like that, you know, three-dimensional stuff. Cheap hairs, easy, easy to make. Just It's just time. So if you've got time to spare, then, you know, you can make them up yourself. I thought they were really awesome. I've been watching them in the morning when I get an opportunity. It's great stuff. Right, we'll just let that set. Watch that, Nottingham. Um, always roll with disadvantage when they're there is a hot hot glue involved. Yeah, well, I feel like that's the case for me. As soon as I can ditch the hot glue gun, I'll be so pleased, and I can unplug it, and I don't have to worry about burning myself. <laughs> oh dear. One of the things I'm going to say right now, when it comes to adding uh, any kind of putty to wire, is it's really hard to get it to stick. So um, it's going to be important that when we're doing this and and creating the tentacles that we do it in such a way that we can easily get to it so we're not blocking ourselves. So something like this, you see how the tentacle behind here is close to the miniature? That is going to be a problem because you can't squeeze it on and uh, the putty I'm using goes really hard. It's not very flexible. So if you were to do this, you'd have to use the green stuff because the, the green stuff is flexible, whereas the milli putt is really goes really hard, harder than the green stuff. Uh, but it's got no flex to it. So just something to remember. Okay. All right, let us try to put the hat on. Oh, check. Check with this. Yep, it's dry. Fred is safe. And it looks a little bit like Dumbledore's hat. Dumbledore. Uh, you're not a wizard. Okay. Miley is the chosen one. <laughs> Hermione is the chosen one. She's the one who actually knows how to do everything. <laughs> oh dear. 
Sorry guys, I'm just um, I'm just having some fun. Hi Jeff, how's it going? Um, I roll that way when I have the soldering iron out. Oh, that's right. Now I'm scared. Yeah, well, I don't like soldering iron, so I'll leave that to my brother. Okay. I feel like the heat is going to transfer into this, and I'm going to regret doing it this way. So let's just get the glue on fast. Put the hat on. Position it. Yeah. I can feel the heat coming through right now. Okay. So don't worry, I know it looks kind of shite, um, or like crap, <laughs> just a, maybe just a fraction like crap, but it, it will look better. You just got to give it a little bit of time. Uh, not, not everything is going to be perfect the first time around. I'll just position that a bit better so it's a bit, more, a bit straighter. I've got this thing about everything being laid out and looking perfect. It's really hard to make live stream look professional. And, and like you know what you're doing, <laughs> it's really, really difficult. Um, and right now, the push for all the videos, everybody's doing sort of pre-recorded stuff. And uh, all these big channels are, you know, I'm really struggling with that whole concept. Okay, so now I need to create like a mouth section. And I feel like the donut is probably my best option. So I'm going to just push that thing over there for a little while. And I'm going to roll this up. Sorry. I'm going to roll this up. I've got to make sure I talk before I start playing with my tin foil. Okay. Now, if you're starting to get the idea, the idea is to make enough of this, build it up thick enough that I can create like a mouth, like a donut that I can attach. Right, so I'm squinching it up because I don't want it to be perfect. Remember, it's supposed to be a creature. It's not a, um, a symmetrical being of any kind. It's not a robot or anything like that. So I'm going to keep building that up. I think I'm going to make it quite large. I want to make the mouth, because I've got enough space here, I can make the, the mouth look quite um, fearsome. Okay, all right. Well, I'm, s I'm still not convinced that's big enough. I'm going to keep going. Okay, let's, uh, let's give it a go and see if I can just shape this into a mouth. Uh, it's giving me something to work with, so I don't know what I'm sort of working on. Let's move that off to the side so you guys can see, and so I can see. I'm going to create a mouth. 
it might be longer than I need it to be. Um, I feel like we're really aiming for more of that shape, aren't we? Sort of like a slight pointedness at the bottom and the top. So not a complete donut, I guess. And I've got to get the right size. It's way too big, so let's turn it there. And then... Okay. Alright. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to use a knife and just cut off the excess that I don't need. Um, it is way too large, way too large. Just shrink that baby down a bit. See if that's going to work better. Uh, a little bit more. Okay, I think it's pretty close. I'm going to just tuck that in. That'll be my point. And I'm probably going to have to use the hot glue gun to, to hold it in place. I'm just going to shape it. I'm trying to shape it before I attach with um, the hot glue gun. So if I squeeze, I want to get sort of like a, um, a diamond shape to it. Oh man, tin foil. Not so easy, actually. Better. You're lucky I don't have a hammer and I'm not bashing it with a hammer. <laughs> okay. Alright. I think we're getting close. I feel like that is roughly what I'm after and I'm going to glue that together and attach it in the front all right okay let's do this glue time it'll be quick for the heat transfers into me and that's that Just let that set. That is our, our mouth. And just clear that away. We're also going to need an eye, so I'm going to grab uh, something to create the eye with. I'm going to mount, I'm, I'm mounting the eye last because I, I feel like the mouth is the main focus for the creature rather than the eyeball. And I can put the eyeball, I would say, pretty much anywhere as long as it's near the top, right? Uh, where's the cell tape end? Who would have guessed beads? Make sure you have a bag of beads, different sizes, because you're going to get to use them for monster eyes all the time. Now, I know my eyeball looks a bit bigger than the one that's here, but I'm going to make a big eyeball. Okay, all right. Okay, that is, I think that's ready for gluing in place. I just need to be able to force it into the shape that I want on the creature. There we go.
Okay, that's, um, I think that's got it roughly where it needs to be. So we'll glue that in place. Oh, oh, it's hot. Now my mouth is a bit, uh, quite a lot larger than the, the miniature that we've got here. But I'm sort of um, exaggerating things quite a lot. And I also feel like I'm going to add a little bit more height to, to this one. Because um, I feel like he needs to be just a little bit taller. I don't want him to be smaller than the one that I'm making. I want him to actually be a bit bigger than that. So we're going to um, make some more rustling noises and just build up the top of him a little bit more. No, I still feel like he needs to be a bit taller than that. So we'll glue that in place. Come here. Come here. Yeah. That's a good fit. Ha <laughs> ha. If I can remember how I stuck it on. That way around. <sighs> Hot. All right, let's just move this out of the way, put this in the center so you can see what I'm... If I start moving things out of the shot and you can't see clearly, you got to let me know because I keep forgetting every once in a while that I'm not alone and there are people watching and you need to be able to see what's going on, otherwise you can't do it yourself. All right. Well, we're getting there. It's um, starting to look more like potentially our monster. Right, so more tin foil. I feel like that isn't going to be enough. I'm going to build up some more. Um, that's not enough. That's too much. Sorry guys, I'm just going to um, dig out a little bit of area just to accept that eyeball. You might not be able to see what I'm doing, but what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to force some of the tin foil away from where I want to put the eye. Right there. And I think what I will do is I'll use the hole in the bead as a um, as the uh, center eyeball, so I don't have to make it. I can then fill it later with a little bit of putty, and it'll it'll look fine. Ha, huh. uh, Jeff. Ha ha. Uh, foiled again. Pixie caramel, anyone? Yes, yes. I'd love to have a pixie caramel. Have you got one? There we go. Okay, so I've got to make sure I keep that open more. I can dig it out, but I think that's probably got it sorted. Now I'm going to make sure I don't cover it up with this piece. Okay, so we'll glue that one in, and then we'll do the eye. Glue it in and do the eye. Okay. Ha! Ho ha! It's hot.
O, O, E. I can build out the middle of it later with tin foil if I need to. I just need to get the top sorted and get the iron. Right, we're gonna, <laughs> gonna give that time to sort of set a little bit. Man. Oh, blimey. Oh, it's hot in here. Another drink of water. All right. So we got the top section. I'm pretty sure I got my eyeball ready to go. Hmm. I'm having second thoughts now. I'm feeling like this bead is actually maybe just larger than I really want it to be. I could go down a small size. Okay. All right. We're going to do some voting. We've got people in the chat. This is your time. Um, I'm going to grab another bead. And I'm going to try to do two different sizes, and you're going to tell me which bead you prefer. And to make it simple, this is the larger bead. And I'm going to put a smaller bead in, and you'll let me know which bead I'm gluing into place. Where is it? Ah, no, come back here. Stay there. Right, where's my... Oh, I taped everything down. <laughs> Make sure everything doesn't come apart on me, right? And disappear, I have beads everywhere, but... It's really hard to get into. Oh, there we go. Alright, okay, smaller bead. Okay, so here's the choices. That's what it looks like. Oh my gosh. You annoying thing. That's what it looks like with a big bead. Okay. So that's choice number one, big bead. And just put in the chat whether you want the big bead or you want the smaller bead. And this is the smaller bead. Will it stay? I don't know. That's the smaller bead. What do people think? Let me know right now because it will decide um, how I proceed with the rest of this build. If you say mm, nothing, then um, you know I know that I, I can just do whatever I like, which I'm quite happy to do, but I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for everybody to sort of join in and let me know what you think. This, the big bead or the smaller bead? Which one is going to be the eye? Okay, Michael Dimart says, small bead looks like it works better. And Nobbingham says, big bead if you add mini putt for eyelids. I'm going to do that either way. Jeff, what do you got here? Smaller, can put a, a more hooded eyelid over it like the creature menacing. All right, so so far we've got the small bead is winning out. Got a... I'll give you a, a minute or two for anybody else while I'm getting ready to um, get my layers of tin foil because we've got to finish around the base of this thing, or around the middle, should I say. We've got uh, three votes in. So far, it sounds like the the smaller bead is winning out. Nobody else? Oh, come on. Oh, no! There it goes. There it goes. Rolling away. Okay, it looks like I'm doing the smaller bead. 
nobody else has said anything else about the big bead, the small bead, or anything like that. So we're doing with the small bead. So the glue in that one, uh, if I can find it, it's rolled away on me. There we go. And I feel like if I glue this in place, yeah, if I glue this in place, it is probably going to hurt. So wish me luck. Put the glue in here rather than on the um on the... stop rolling away come back here stay stay <laughs> okay glue is in the bead is the bead is attached and try and force it upward a little bit so it's higher rather than that lower lower position here we go we've got an eyeball ha ha that wasn't too bad okay all right so i'm just going to miss, move mr um roper that we're trying to duplicate over there for a second and i need to i feel like the the middle here is lacking a bit of tin foil so i'm going to do some wrapping just around there just to build it up a little bit Sorry if I'm moving out of the shot. That wasn't my intention. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, that looks good. I just need to put glue in there and put it back in exactly the right right place again. <laughs> okay. All right. go that's just getting in the way now I'll move them out of the way for a second All right so we're going to deal with the other side as well because it looks a little bit sort of weird doesn't it? it doesn't look quite right so we'll fill in that gap that's what the tin foils for and fold it over fold it over Come on, you sucker, just squeeze into place. That looks all right. Let's take that off. Okay, good. Doing all right. The basic structure is there. Um, we've got enough details. Now, for those of you who are wondering what's going to happen with the teeth, I'm going to drill the teeth out or holes for the teeth in the mouth section. And I'm going to do that once the putty's on because I can drill into the tin foil and the putty and then put in my toothpicks, which I'll have to do later. So don't don't think that it's it's not going to have teeth because it most certainly will have teeth. I feel like the back end just needs there's a little bit of a gap right there. I don't know if you can make it out, but it's a little bit hollowed. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's helped quite a lot. We'll just take that piece out. Oh, 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 oh. Sticking myself to it again. Ah. Okay. All right. Uh, it's just a basic shape is looking all right-ish. I feel like I'm going to build an... I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a hollow just there as well. And I think I'm going to just build in another little section just there. And that should just about have our basic structure done. If we wanted to make it bigger at the bottom, we could add more. Um, I'm still not completely sure I'm going to worry about doing that. I mean, I could, but... Okay. Um, yeah. Yep, that'll do. That's right. Put that in there. How's it going, Mel? Patrick Star Monster. <laughs> um, Dungeons and Dragons is all about the monsters. And the stranger and more bizarre they are, the better they are. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, so I feel like the top section and the middle is, is mostly sorted. I don't think there's too much I need to worry about there. The basic shape's fine. Um, it's not quite as stable in the bottom as I'd like, but it won't matter because that, that putty will probably fill it out. I'm, I'm going to build in a little bit more down the bottom because it's a little bit sparse in the front. Well, I kind of feel like it is, so... Either that or I'm just trying to use all my tin foil up. There we go. Okay. Yep, that's good. Let's uh, put some glue in there. From there to there. Force it into place, get my little tool, press it in. Okay, it's looking good. Definitely got the basic shape sorted. And I think I'll do one more on the other side where it's a little bit hollowed out and not quite as, as fat as I would like. Okay, um, how's that going to work? I'm going to go. So, and then twist over. Has anybody watched the, um, on the Twitch TV, the official Dungeons and Dragons Learn to Play um, that they have running today? I haven't seen that sort of thing before. I saw it and I was like, Oh, finally, they're doing something like that. I should think so. Has anybody watched it before? I'd be interested if anybody has, because I'm going to try and watch it myself um, after the stream, just to see how, how they do it. Um, so many people running D&D um, &D channels now. There's a, we're a dime a dozen. 
super popular. Lots of them, lots and lots. Okay, that's not too bad. I feel like that's that's probably about right. I'm using as much of the the base of this um, plastic base as I possibly can. I want a reasonable sized miniature, so I think that is is good. And uh, I'll take that out. Just make sure I remember where the glue's got to go. Glue from there to there. Okay. As I said, if you came here to watch me burn myself, that's definitely going to happen. Okay. Alright. Oh my. Okay. For the sake of the uh, craft, I'm, I'm hurting myself a little bit. Okay, I've got one... Hmm... There's some little gaps just there and there. I just think like a, just a ball of this would fill it up. This feels like it's just a bit too much and I'll wind up having to fill it up with putty anyway. So... Let's take that out. And how's this going? Oh, I had it, had it figured out before. Okay. Good enough. And the other side, and then we're done. And then we'll wet, and we'll shape these um, tendrils, get these tentacles um, into some sort of decent position. Oh. Am I getting anywhere with this piece of No, I don't think I am. Let's forget about it. Cool, put that there, get the glue gun. No burning myself, hold it to the place I want it, let it set. Okay, all right. So as for the back of the mouth, I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to use um, my putty to shape the inside of the mouth. The basic shape is sorted, and now I can disconnect that glue gun that's been burning me the whole time. So that'll be, like, super helpful for me. <laughs> it's time to do the tentacles. Or tendrils. Tendrils. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to move the glue gun as far away from me as possible so I don't burn my elbow on it. Okay, drink of water. Ah. Alright, so we're just over an hour and it's time to try to figure out how to shape these tentacle thingies. And decide, deciding on the length is going to be hard because I'm still not completely convinced that um, they shouldn't be like super long. But um, it's also going to be feasible, right? You're going to be able to store it some way. I like this shape, so I feel like I should definitely go with copying or duplicating that sort of uh, position. Let's go down and then down and round, down and bend. Bend, 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 and then, oh, what is it doing there? It's sort of going around like that. And then, there. Uh, where's those flies? Grab them. Uh, what's that, Mel? Um, da -da 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 -da. 
Uh, if only the miniatures were a dime a dozen. The only problem with the miniatures being a dime a dozen, which would be nice, is that some poor person in a third world country, and probably kids, are going to be the ones who are going to suffer uh, as they are sort of put to work to make these things. That's the only hassle. Uh, Mel, I love your monster selection. Uh, they are monsters I might not think of initially, but they fit quite nicely into my mid-level campaign. Consequently, I made a few ocular swarms thanks to your inspiration. Oh, cool. Really? That's awesome. Okay, so uh, let's get back to wiggling tentacles. And I feel like that isn't too bad. I've got to be able to get around it, so there's got to be enough space around this thing. It is... I mean, this thing is a little bit bigger. It's certainly a lot further out than the uh, the original, so maybe I should just bring that in a bit more. Hmm... Okay. Oh my gosh. You'd think working with a paperclip would not be so difficult, but trust me, it is. Oh, I feel like I might have just dislodged that, that tentacle. Oh, I'm going to have to put some glue or something on there to make sure it stays in place. Yes. Okay, well, I think we'll clip it. Clip it there, clip it further down maybe. And you can do this any way you like, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can make your tentacles or your tendrils uh, any shape position that you want. Whatever is going to work for you. Okay, all right, so there's one. Uh, my next one is, let's see, let's go down, force that. <clears throat> so let's uh... um how much do I want to cut off though? Yeah, let's cut off about there. That one done. Only four more to go. Uh, now the back one looks lots. This one looks simpler. Let's just copy that.
you're really clever you could put like a little person um, <laughs> being held by one of these things uh, what's that Mel um, say so it's says it can reach up to 50 feet so the tentacles could be about 10 tiles long yeah they could um, it's really up to you it's probably more about storage you know if, if it's the tentacles are sort of too wide out it's going to be more of a hassle to store but yeah they certainly could be okay so I'm going to clip clip it about the same distance as the uh, no, that's too far I know that's the one I want clip it about there so that it'll be roughly about the same length okay so that's tentacle number three and uh, what I'm going to do I've got two extra tentacles here that I need to create I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and then I'm going to try to bring them sort of over the top squeeze it squeeze it Oh, that is a fiddly process. Okay, let's see how long that is. Cut that there. All right. Cool. Uh, next one um, <clears throat> so how am I do this uh, it's tricky just force it down I think that's the easiest way let's press down and then curve it Maybe I've made far too many tentacles. Maybe there's a reason to only have four that I was not completely aware of that I should be. I feel like that could go down more, but... I want to twist it and go around the body a bit. Uh, there and where's the little length that I've been using? I'll just trim that off so I know sort of roughly where it's going to be finishing. might do the same thing with the other one right now okay so they can't get into each other's space otherwise I can't work with it so I need to just make sure that each tentacle is more or less in its own space I feel like that's alright <clears throat> Another one going, say, up, down and up. Down and up or up? I think I'll go up. Let's go up. Sorry, can't see what I'm doing, eh?
Alright. <clears throat> okay, I think that just, just make a quick check to make sure I've got enough space to get around things. Yeah, that looks alright. That looks fine. Space to get around. Space. Not as much space as I would like, but if I go like that, maybe. And then twist that. That's better. And then I'm going to go up more. All right. There we go. I think that is good enough for today in terms of our structure. Um, it's over an hour. We've been at it for a little while now. So we're going to definitely, I'm definitely going to come back. We are going to finish this. We are going to try to make this look like something like that. Probably not identical, but close to um, look yeah if you uh, if you guys want to um, see the next one I don't know when I'll do it next I I'm gonna try to sort of fit them in because these these monster builds take about like an hour or just over an hour so take a little while but we're certainly gonna come back I really want to finish this I'm quite excited I, I honestly um, thought I would have more problems putting this together than I did not to say that I it was flawless or anything like that and it certainly doesn't like what look like the creature just yet, but I feel like the main structure is all there, and it's just a matter of building the putty over. So if you like this video, just um, hit that like button, the up thumb. Um, if you didn't like the button, um, didn't like the video, then you can put the down button or the down thumb. Uh, if you if you uh, thought somebody else might find it useful, then share the video. If you're not already subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. And uh, beside the subscribe button on my channel, you'll also see a little bell button. And that gives you occasional notifications when I do another video. And, and, it, that, and I do a lot of live streaming, as most people know. So it's good to be notified when I am live streaming because a lot of my content is live streamed. That's not to say this video won't be available to watch later on as a pre-recorded video because they all are. That's not an issue whatsoever. If you have any questions, then... Now is the time while you're in the live stream to post your questions right now before I leave. Uh, if you're not part of the live stream, then I will answer questions down in the comments. Tell me, did you make your own roper? Uh, what did you think of the process so far? We aren't finished, don't worry, there's more to come. And uh, yeah, if you want to support me, watch more of my videos. I've got an affiliate link down in the description. All the materials and tools that I use today are down in the description. You can check that out. And hey, Till next time, keep rolling those 20s, and preferably the big one. You know, the, the thing with the 2 and the 0, the big, that's what you want. You want to roll those. Okay, everybody, I'm going to head off. Um, there's no more questions out there, so, so I'm, I think this is a good point to stop. And um, this video should go up in about half an hour to an hour for you to watch if you want to watch it. And hey, thank you for all of you who stuck around and watched so much of this stream. I know it's a long process.